You're creating an experience for somebody that they'll never forget in their whole life. You know, it's like going to Disney World. You would probably never forget that when you're a young kid. And to have something like that, but where you're really actually making a real difference, they'll, you never forget it. All right, hello everyone. My name is Jim Britson. I am from Ohio originally, and I moved down to the Keys just about three years ago, and I'm loving it, and I'm here with... Gabrielle. I'm from Indiana, and I've been living in the Keys for just over two years now. We're, we're, the, we're the passionate coral people, I guess, and maybe a little crazy about the coral at some aspects but I'd say a little in a good obsessed. way we're, we want to we want to make a difference in this world and we want to have something where you know we can at least we can say we tried to to really make a difference in this if we go down we're going to go down swinging and so with coral restoration so it's a whole community based involvement we need as much help as we can to do this and that's part of what, what, what she does is she's the volunteer coordinator and trainer. She gets the engagement of everybody in the cor like in the keys and, and is branching out towards more so other states that aren't, aren't even surrounded by bodies of water or the ocean. You know, I have friends, well, what the hell is a coral or you know, is a <laughs> rock live a, an yeah. animal or a plant? Yeah. And, and she is educating people to bring them down here to get involved, to help us out and really make a difference and, and dive with us. It's really important to have help, I guess. I mean, we're a team of, I usually say, you know, four or so people, kind of an all hands on deck situation where you need to do as much as you can in, in a sense, like as fast as you can, um, for as cheap as you can and all these things and putting all that entire equation together and seeing how many corals you can plant, how many corals can you grow. So we work in offshore coral nurseries that basically farm coral. So um, we're farmers <laughs> by day. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, we grow coral. Jim manages an entire coral nursery. So thinking about how many corals do we have? How many species do we have? How many different genotypes do we have? There's so many little intricate things that go into what we're actually doing on a daily basis. And I focus a lot on getting people involved in this. Obviously, scuba divers, you have to be dive certified to do the work in our nurseries with us. Um, but we do sometimes have things that people can do uh, that aren't scuba divers or aren't even swimmers. So we'll fragment corals on land and that gets people involved holding coral, touching it, cutting it with a saw, something you would never ever think it's you a massacre. could do. Yeah. But it actually works. But it yeah. works and it stimulates them to grow faster. Yep. And we uh, put those back out in our nursery to grow. And then ultimately the goal with growing all of this coral is to plant the coral out onto the reef and uh, hopefully it grows over the next few years and eventually spawns and has like new biodiverse coral babies. Yeah, so I mean, there, there, there are selective genotypes that do better in different areas, the different genetic strains, and we wanna make sure we keep a good balance of each of that so when they, if they do grow large enough and they do spawn, it's not just two corals sexually reproducing, mm -hmm. and then it's just the same amount of course. We want to have as much genetic diversity so that we can create new genotypes and create new, ide ideally, heat-resistant, climate change-resistant, multi-factor multi resistant corals that are going to survive the long run, and that's part yeah. of it. We're yeah. <clears throat> collecting these survivors throughout all these um, bleaching events, disease events. We're, we're collecting the survivors and moving them to our nurseries, growing them out, and that's part of it is, is getting the community involved. That's the most important thing we need is to get people to take ownership and actually come out. You know, we show them the nursery. I show them, this is what I'm, I'm trying to build this nursery to, to be able to have people that can come from the upper keys, lower keys, or anywhere and just take our training program that she made and go out and say, yeah, wow, I understand this. I, 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 this is therapeutic. Cleaning, cleaning around these corals promotes their growth. And I go, okay. Let's, let's get you to plant some. And then, and then we, we, we take them planting and they go, wow, that's a full compass approach. They see the whole thing. They can see the corals when they're done. And then a month later, 
or six months later, or even a year later, I'll take a picture and say, look where your coral's at now that you planted. That's what you did. You can take ownership of that. That's what we want to do is be able to get the community to get involved from anywhere, wherever you are, land, land-based, if you're not diving, whatever, you can still get involved propagating corals. But then if you're planting and you see that, we want people to take ownership of that and go, you know, I planted that coral. And then you come back years later, Look how well it's doing. Really cool to see um, people get so excited about something that you're so excited about, like swimming around and seeing the fish that pop up in those nurseries that might not have been there before because there's these structures and these things there that they can hide in and feed from. And We can go out and plant a thousand corals and we feel, oh man, we worked 12 hours, kicked ass. But now it's like the, the real main important thing is to get everybody to understand that this is a struggling ecosystem that is so important to our planet that, you know, the oceans supply at least at least 50 percent of our oxygen and the coral reefs support at least 25 percent of our marine life. And if our oceans die, our fishing industry dies, we're going to die. So we really need to, to, to think about this. And and even slower than that, just the whole Keys economy is based on the ocean. I mean, people come here to see the ocean, to eat fish, to go in the water. More, to... more dive shops than gas stations yeah, in the Keys. So. Yeah, so that's like the moneymaker for everybody here. You're here because, you know, you're waitressing because there's people coming to see the ocean. You're, you're a dive instructor because there are people who want to see the ocean. You're in these, like, shops because people are here to I, so it's just all based around the coral reefs here, and um, it's super important to take care of it. And to get involved is really easy, and that's, again, what we really want to do. You know, we uh, try to make it so that you can come out, and hopefully next year we'll have a program set up where you can come out with a few dive shops in Marathon and be able to just go to the nursery and do some cleaning dives and see the corals, get a tour, you know, be able to say that you've worked in a coral nursery um, we, you know? we need more local volunteers like Heather. That's what we need. We need that. And and people that are just really, you know, at least the locals, but you, you start to, to, to share that passion with people that are from, like us, Ohio, yeah. Indiana. People that don't know, my friends, what's a coral? Or I had no idea that you show them a picture of a reef. I had no idea that was even down there. I didn't yeah. know that existed. And then you go and you explain it and they're like, wow, come down and help out. Whatever, if you if you don't want to dive, you don't have to. We can we can take you to, to fragment corals, show you these different species, show you that you know these will eventually grow and then they'll fuse together and form a large mounding, bouldering coral that will protect our shorelines. Not all, many factors, but come down, help <laughs> out. If you feel, if you love it, you can donate. Um, yeah. But we just ask that you you really think about things in your daily your actions, of what you do, and your yeah. your footprints on this planet. I mean, you're creating an experience for somebody that they'll never forget in their whole life. You know, it's like going to Disney World. You would probably never forget that when you're a young kid. And to have something like that, but where you're really actually making a real difference, they'll you never forget it. You remember exactly the shape of the coral, that you put it down, what it looked like, what that structure around you looked like to come back i think that's really important you invoke like a feeling and then they'll make a you'll they'll continue to make a difference how are they supposed to learn how to like care about something if they don't feel anything for it so we want people to feel like they love coral and love the reefs and it's like impossible not to happen to somebody when you go and plant a coral so that's the thing people will protect what they love that's what jacques cousteau said so if you can you can show them something, make them fall in love with the ocean if they've never seen it. Show them these happy fish around this coral, and then they get to see how it's thriving years later. Then they fall in love with it, and then they want to protect it. And that makes the difference. Yeah, and then you'll be addicted like we are. <laughs> <laughs>